So the blackout shift, this is blackout shift number one. A few people have seen this already. I gave this away for free in Revelations. Uh, Revelations got taken down, so this move kind of got lost with, with the rest of the um, Revelation tapes. Um, it's a very illogical thing to do to, to a very questionable thing to do to spin a deck around like this. Um, when I'm doing this, I make it look like I'm in inspecting the edges for some bizarre reason. And I, it, it allows me to twist the deck and people to, to get used to me twisting. So it just looks like I'm doing this. And then amidst that twisting, I execute the move. And then I can twist again, go back into position, the move happens again. Um, and what's happening is a simple scissor cut. If you don't know what a scissor cut looks like, it's this. Now, I'm stopping the scissor cut halfway. So I'm not actually doing a scissor cut. The basic scissor cut, you grip from the outer edges like this in open mechanics. And the thumb is here. So the thumb comes to the back and it grips the bottom half of the deck and it pivots away on finger one, it pivots it away, it clears and then closes. So the grip's here, thumb goes on top, pivot away, clear, come back. So if you look without this hand here, there's a scissor cut and it comes back down. So that's stage one, learning the scissor cut and learning how to do it with time. So the first stage is a scissor cut and the rotation of that eight needs to happen when the hand, when the fingers are on top or the, the rotation of the bone card, wherever that is. So the hand's on top. So as the hands turn into the top, the thumb moves to the back. And now when it goes down, the scissor cut is executed and this happens. So the rotation of the, of the, the second packet matches the rotation of the hand or thereabouts. It actually doubles it up, but it's unseen because it's going in the same direction like this. So all I'm doing, once I've got to this point, I cover the bomb packet. Watch what happens when I cover the bomb packet. This is the bomb packet. It looks like a, a change. It looks like a change has happened. <coughs> but all I'm doing is covering that packet. So here, I'm now gonna cover the three, and you see the seven. So I'll cover the seven, and you see another set, a different seven. I cover this seven, and you see the ten of diamonds. So I don't actually execute or complete the execution of a scissor cut. I stop it halfway and then close the deck carefully, like this. So I do this a few times, pretend that I'm inspecting the ends. When it's up here like this, the thumb goes to the back here. I now execute a, um, I start to execute a scissor cut on the way back round. This hand stays in the way of the 10 already and the two circles round. This hand is completely covering up the 10 and look what position this hand's in. The thumbs up and I, it looks obvious from this point what I'm doing, I'm just covering the 10 up. But because the thumbs up, I go forward, I take this packet and then I line it up over the 10. So I don't actually complete the scissor cut. So here's what that looks like exposed. I cover the two reach over, grab this packet, pull it over the top of the two. So like this, put it over the top. So like this, put it over the top. So now when you watch like this, you can see the, the let me try and get it in real time. You can see everything now that you know how it works. You can see this hand bringing the packet back. You can see this hand covering the bomb packet up. You can almost see it vanish into my hand, that bottom packet. This will take a little bit of practice to get kind of fluid. Even sometimes I don't get it looking fluid, but you can hide it and tidy that uh, bottom packet up by once you grab, once you're in this position where you're straightening up, you can actually move the, the bottom packet or the new packet forward to spread the deck to show the, the, the card that switches in the middle. So the six of diamonds would look like this. I move forward, I spread to show that the six of diamonds made its way almost all the way to the top of the deck. You don't need to do that because it's kind of smooth as it is. 
uh, like this and you can just end like this and it looks quite straight and if you do it correctly you can leave a gap now this isn't necessarily made to be a pass as such or a shift as such but if you do hold a break like if I wanted to, to if I if I glimpse and I look in and I see the eight, the eight of hearts I've just seen, I, I'm going to hold the thumb break to begin with, and then when I come around, I can cut to any any playing card. So I'm going to riffle through, see the card that I want, ace of diamonds, get the grip, get the thumb in place to begin with, so I'm already broken to the ace of diamonds. Now I can do it with the thumb there to begin with. This just makes the um, idea of making this a real shift. Uh, more easy to execute as a demonstration. It's not supposed to be an actual thing. Uh, the actual thing, the actual principle, an idea of this comes from a real uh, gambling shift, a real table shift that you'll see the demonstration of, which is, uh, I call it simply blackout shift number two. And it's the same thing based on a table. And the idea is you, you've just done some uh, shuffling on the table and you see this action sometimes where they straighten the deck up. You straighten up the cards and you hide the, the shift in doing that doing it very messily so in the, in the idea of, of pine the deck down you do the same thing so it's the black house shift it's the same principle but the the mechanics are slightly different but the same things happen in the same twist so you hold the deck from a side from the sides like this and fingers two three and four are going to work their way over here like this maybe this is a better angle so they come to the back like this so finger one's here all these fingers come to the back right here and I break off the bottom half with finger two so finger two breaks inwards and the, the other fingers come along for the ride and the thumb and finger one break off uh, the rest of the cards I believe this is called a knuckle cut or a K cut where you do this and you close the deck. Um, done in real time looks like this. Done in real time and tidy looks like this. <laughs> done in real time and tidy looks like this. So I'm taking advantage of the knuckle cut, of the K cut. I believe that's what it's called, I may be wrong. So I'm doing the knuckle cut on the table like this. Now it gets messy because there's no support because it's on the table. That's why this hand comes in and helps it. Now I disguise this hand coming in to help it by patting the cards down. So I offer a little bit of a jump in the deck. So the deck jumps a little bit when I do it. So we go up, twist, down. Now you can see exactly what's happening. Fingers three, four, and five, um, two, three, and four go all the way over to the side. You can see that they connect. The thumb breaks off and pivots on finger one. But this packet stays still and it's this packet that spins out between fingers one and two. And as soon as it gets uncomfortable there, it's released and the cards are aligned. It's quite difficult at first. I'll try and do it slowly. Like this, in the real time. And it looks quite messy. Um, although it does come from uh, the, the world of, of card cheating, like if it's done this way, you, you can't necessarily see it because the backs don't change. I'll try and do a, a, a real tidy one. You can't see something's going on, but although it comes from, from card table deception, um, I, I only have used this for demonstration to, sh to show what kind of things can happen and could happen at, at card games. So that's blackout shift number two.